Welcome everyone. Um, it is currently uh, October 13th, 2022. So, managed to stream a second day in a row. Things got easier. Yeah. Um, we're gonna see what we can do today. I am hoping that we can do a fully fledged stream. Also, the music is really loud. And then... I think like this is better. Yeah, just drink a little bit of water. Trying to finish Amber. I actually don't know her last name. Let me search it up. Genshin Amber. She's only. Amber? Huh. Amber. Yeah, it doesn't say a last name, so... It would be cool if it, if they did something with her in the future to reveal her last name or something. Maybe she's related to someone. Okay, uh, just checking. Okay. Let me check. Dream. Yeah. All right. We're all set. Uh, the reference is always a bit weird. Okay, we're all set. Now I know we did base coloring yesterday, but it was more because I was pretty goddamn exhausted. Let's call this, uh, not base, uh, flat, flat coloring, that's it. We're gonna do something before that. We're gonna be doing uh, shading. Yeah, we're gonna be doing shading. Uh, again, it's like uh, trying new approaches to my illustration method to see what I like and what I don't like. Selected, select the quick selected area. All right. We're going to be blocking the transparent. So if we were to Paint here exactly. It's like a flipping mask. All right. Now, shadows first. Shadows 
shadows first. So we're gonna do rough shading. I should determine where the light comes from. Which is this. I'm gonna say the light comes from up here. Yeah, from up here. And because it's like sunlight, it comes from that. It comes in that direction, but in all, because um, it's not—it's not a spotlight, right? The sun is so far away that it becomes a sort of laser. Just remember that meme. That meme. Uh, no, the sun is a deadly laser. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bill. Bill Wars. It's an incredible artist. tired uh, I'm still with a lot of exhaustion pretty much still recovering okay, this is definitely gonna be all in shadow yeah <laughs> yeah I'm because of that uh, four-day break, I might have alienated the only viewer that I had, unfortunately. That's okay. More will come. I'm sure. Some people like using gradient maps. I always found them a little bit hard to do. So I'm already working on what I want to do for like the main YouTube channel because I have the VODs so that uh, people can watch anything they might have missed or you know just to have as a background noise I sometimes do that like um, Sometimes I work with Small Ants stream in the background. Well, not stream. I very rarely watch him live, but the VODs. Sometimes I'm working with the VODs on the background. Recently, I watched um, his speed run to finish uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearls uh, Pokedex, like regional Pokedex. That was fun. It's just 
pretty exhausting because I think it took an entire day. Which, you know, for a Pokédex is pretty impressive. But it's a goddamn long um, experience. I think he cut it into eight, three eight hour vlogs, I think. Which might have been the duration of the streams. I'm not sure. About that. Okay, I think the way that I'm gonna tackle this is like two layers of shadows. And um, then ambient occlusion. And then. work on the lights. It's easier, at least for me, it's easier to work first on the shadows and then on the lights. Yesterday, the only thing that kept me going was coffee, pretty much. It was ridiculous. I was so hyper. Uh, I had the coffee zoomies, right? And I was at the gym. I, I'm pretty sure I wasn't doing the exercises right. I was just jolting through the, the exercises. I never done them that fast. I'm pretty sure I was pretty much doing nothing. Whatever. I just knew I had to uh, get back home, have a bath, uh, well before 9, so that I could uh, at least stream for a bit. messaged this year monologuing Exhausting that uh, I even forgot to check on um, Messenger to see if anyone said anything important. People were suspecting that I was dead. That was fun. The patch came yesterday, right? Usually on, on uh, Wednesdays. Yeah. Or did I, am I forgetting something?
this. iPad team comp like eight bruisers <laughs> or eight guardians. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, uh, does Dragon Mancer reach eight, or is it just six Dragon Mancer? Life uh, finds a way. <laughs> Eight dragon uh, Yeah, I gotta try that one because the spat is craftable. So I'm sure with a few tries, I could get a dragon monsters with Yasuo upgraded. <laughs> Oh, that would be nice to see. I mean, either that or Nunu. Nunu ate Dragon Mancer. I'm sure even with the consecutive nerfs, he would still probably be a menace. Six dragons. Mm, but I know that four dragons gives you an extra team slot, right? So you with a normal team you could get ten dragons. Not ten dragons, ten slots for five dragons. To have six dragons, you would need the extra team size yeah the plus one from augments and the plus one from um tacticians tacticians crown right i mean either way like, the buffs that you receive are pretty good you receive like ability power magic resistant armor that's pretty nice I mean, depending on the on the dragons that you use, right? Because uh, there are games where we are nomsy enjoyers, and then there are games where we are not. Also, I've never played. I never played Evokers. I might study it for a while to see if I can do any anything stupid about it. There's always room for improvement. <laughs> Ascend. Hmm. You know what I want to ascend? The temporary game mode that they added to League of Legends. That was... The only type of ascension that I need, and they removed it, and now yeah, yeah. remember when everyone thought that um, the Star Guardian event would have a a PVE mode? Oh, uh, how dumb were we all? I think I haven't seen the trailer for Star Guardian yet. It just flew so under my radar. Oh, not the trailer. I saw the trailer. I didn't see the music video, I think. But a lot of times they go for such generic things, like... 
they they give us breadcrumbs of story and when they give us like really hard fully fleshed fully fleshed out story it's either arcane which was fantastic but not canon or it's uh ruination which is canon but it sucks I don't need a huge ass event, just you know, just give more more canon each time. Or else the world seems kinda still. I think that's why Genshin still survives a little bit. Because they do give even without the big expansions, they do give you um some lore. And a lot of lore you can discover. to make money but Jesus Christ it's an, arti an artistic endeavor if you only do things for the money uh, you're gonna run out pretty quickly that's my opinion at least I can clearly see that things that you can get for free a lot of times just completely break, right? And even paid things like the tokens from Star Guardian, all the problems that arose with the, with it, it's like I don't know, I don't know what what they're doing. Also, the they are kind of safekeeping themselves with the advanced tech skins like everything now is mechas and things like that right and that that is getting old really quickly for me you know for us that have been uh, here since like project yasuo time when you know project yasuo was actually really cool but it's getting old it's getting old for us Maybe it feels fresh for people that are starting, which I'm very sorry for. Like, you should not be starting League of Legends now. But it takes years of sunk cost fallacy to actually leave League of Legends. are cool but but I'm more specifically um, referring to the Azir worlds skin it's like it's a world skin I never looked at them like um, futuristic and I don't know it feels kind of lazy because there's so many already different concepts for futuristic skins.
because there are like so many cool things that they could do. Why is it so scratchy? Hold on a second. I think I have to like clean my water. Uh, I only have um. I only have a small idea. Like I know that NA is getting railed at this moment. I think it's like zero nine, right? Uh, what else? I know that um, there was something with Mad Lions. Like I think NA won against EU in one game or something. But you know my picks, like, Faker is going to be the best player, uh, no doubt. It's, it's Faker. Uh, yes. <laughs> Copium. Honestly, it's like, I only watch the finals. In group stage, I is 0-9. 0-9 in group stage. Absolutely incredible. Mm. Um, what about what about China? I'm sure China uh, is strong too. Right? The thing is, like, EU in recent years have always been doing great, and they sometimes even reach finals, and they just fumble it up completely. So, like, it would be cool if EU could win another Worlds, but even if that happens, it's not going to be a, it's not going to be that soon, I think. But it is surprising how. Uh, we kind of recovered. Uh, I mean, I say recovered, but like season one and season two weren't really world championships. They were more like Western championships. So it doesn't count for me, at least. Like it's part of their history, but it doesn't count. Yeah, China's pretty strong. China's pretty strong. Chinese team is the one I was betting on. <laughs> Sucks to suck, I guess. This is a bit unrelated, but I remember this. I discovered the other day, right? So, Imagine Dragons did a World's Anthem. I don't know if it was in 2014, right? The Warriors one. And they did uh, at least one song for Arcane. I don't remember if they did more than one. But yeah, and I discovered why Imagine Dragons are actually very good uh, in making music for companies. Because 
their album Night Visions, which is like an incredible album. Like, I think I love every single song on, on that album, was actually commissioned by Marvel. And they figured out that the music was so good that they just released the album under their own name, uh, you know, not under Marvel's name. And that to me is like so incredible. That was so long ago. Let me see. I was listening to this like a year after it came out. I was like, whoa, Imagine Dragons, that's such a, a cool band. And like six months later, it became super popular. Night Visions released on September 4th, 2012. This was so this was I started listening to it one year before they made Warriors. Like night, the album Night Visions is the one that has the music radioactive in it. That music blew up and then every single song from that album blew up, but they were like late bloomers, right? They came out, the album came out and it wasn't, you know, that impactful. And now they have like a bunch of platinum records and diamond diamond records because of the album it just took like a year for it to become popular it's such an interesting story too but but yeah like every every single song is incredible let me see uh, the list Radioactive, Tiptoe, It's Time, Demons, On Top of the World. On Top of the World is like used in every single commercial. Amsterdam, Hear Me, Every Night, Bleeding Out, Underdog, Nothing Left to Say. Okay, the iTunes uh, bonus tracks I haven't heard of. I think Tokyo I have heard. Okay, there are a lot of bonus tracks that I haven't heard of. It's like nowadays, uh, I'm growing kind of tired of their style, but Night Visions was a really good album. And then they had like an extra track, which was Rocks, I think. That was super... Uh, how can I say this? The style felt... not the, style, the music itself felt very happy and the lyrics were really sad. <laughs> that was like the, the first time that I actually paid attention to tonal dissonance. And like more recently, I think it was 21 Pilots that also released a song that was a uh, good day, I think. And I think the right at the beginning of the music, it's like lost, lost my job, my wife and child, homie just sued me. <laughs> and the music is super happy and I felt that was so ironic but I really like that type of, of stuff because uh, it just shows that a lot of conventions in art uh, change from culture to culture like there are certain musical scales I learned this like a few months ago there are certain uh, musical scales in uh, common pop culture that are associated with happiness that in other places on earth are actually associated with sadness, right? And for instance, uh, we have this idea that cool and warm colors are a 
like a static thing, an objective thing, but they're not, right? They have a little bit of wiggle room. Like there are some cultures that debate that purple is a warm color where, you know, for us, it's actually cold. What else? I know there's more things about colors. Like I know the um, street lights in Japan, for instance, they say that the green light is actually blue because long ago there wasn't the concept of green, I think. Like green was just a shade of blue, a weird shade of blue. That is impressive, honestly, if anything. It, it, you know, <coughs> sorry, when I was, I have to, I have to continue studying Japanese. I, I stopped for a bit, but I have to, I have to study it more. But when I was studying it, I realized that Japanese people look at the world in a very different way than we do. First is we do this thing. I'm gonna open a new No not edit. Sure. Like we have actually do I have a time lapse for Oh I do, I do. Alright. Like in um let's see. In Western uh, counting, right? We do like one, then we do ten, then we do a hundred, right? And we do a thousand, and then we do uh, ten times that, we do a hundred times that, and then we do the new name, which is a million, right? And then ten million, a hundred million. In Japanese, it's like ichi, ju, Hyaku, sen, and then instead of becoming like uh, 10,000, they have a specific name for 10,000, so it becomes man. And then they do uh, 10 ten thousands, and the million is actually a hundred ten thousands. Ah. Uh. Okay, 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 man. Mm, all right. Well, two can play that game, technically speaking. This is 10 to the 0. This is 10 to the 1. This is 10 to the 2. <laughs> we can go that way. <laughs> all I have to do is just... Uh, log. Log 10. Log 10 of that and it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can't beat me. And if you complain that it starts at 0, I'll do log 10 plus 1. You can't beat me. I'm something of a scientist myself. Ooh. Oh yeah, I have one better. Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> Spy x Family. <laughs> I'm really chugging down water today. Jesus. Did I missing that much water? I need a pen. There's a pen. Wait a second. I'm just gonna get a pen. Speaking of um, Spy X Family, oh, the door was open. Actually, I don't know if the door being open makes more echo. 
Uh, speaking of Spy X Family, uh, have you watched it? I don't know if you watched the first uh, half, but if you did, have you started watching the second half? The second half is pretty cool so far. <sighs> Spy X Family dude, is so good. It is so good. And the dog as well. Holy crap. Also, I love uh, the type of wholesome comedy is my new favorite anime genre. Right? Right? Ugh. I think our tastes are kind of changing because we are we, we are already very exposed to the shonen genre so it's like unless something comes up to change it which Chainsaw Man might do because I've read the first part of the manga and the beginning of the second part so it might be a little bit different uh, it might disappoint a lot of people actually but I think because we are exposed so much to that type of story, we just kind of flow into different stuff, right? So like wholesome comedy, uh, you are enjoying it more now. I, I'm i actually enjoying more uh, slice of life stuff. Again, this is me shilling for Kyoto Animation. But Hibik Euphonium is an anime that I think everyone with big aspirations in life needs to watch because it is fantastic. Like people can um, people can go, oh, Violet Evergarden is really good, which it is. I won't deny that. But I think EPK Euphonium is more relatable. Like, Violet Evergarden is a story about war. Hibike is more of a day to day thing. And I think the small stories that are inserted in the high school and even college, even though they don't tackle college, like, the stories are pretty relatable. Yeah, I think it's a very enjoyable show. And season 3 is coming next year, baby! I'm actually not sure wait, exactly when it's coming out. Let me, just, let me see. E -B -A -U -A. And the music. Oh, the music is so good. And then there's going to have a movie as well. Ah! A uh, premiere. Yeah, technically is considered a slice of life. But it's like, I would make Kaon more of a slice of life and he became more of a drama kind of thing. Oh, this, uh, this article is really outdated. Releasing sometime in 2021. Yeah, no. Uh, no. Oh, I know it's next year. Okay, I'm going to open a YouTube video because it's a trailer.
I don't know. I'm my my Japanese is so rusty. Okay, 2023. But I can't really tell what it is. Just like or maybe Okay, no, no, 2024 is when the anime is coming out, so next year there's going to be a movie. That's the thing. Uh, I also watched the Made in Abyss movie. Oh my god, you watched it. <laughs> uh, dude. I swear to god. The movie? Ah, what is wrong with the author? I'm pretty sure the author just enjoys watching kids suffering. That's gotta be it. But if you watch the movie, so now you have to watch the season. The second season. I'm gonna tell you, the second season is heavy. Very heavy. I gotta say, the folds in this clothing are not very convincing. Whatever. Another thing to the study pile. Ah. But what did you think about the movie? in a spooky ghost costume. Ah, yes. Yes. Of course, of course. Let me, let me just, um... <laughs> this boogie. <laughs> Spook. There it is. <laughs> there it fucking is. Man, uh, five head. Five head. I want to see AI art trying to replicate that one. so frustrated with the movie because you know Prushka shows up uh, they will mention Prushka in the season the second season and I'm just like something's gonna happen to her I just know it they're, mm, they're making her too uh, sympathetic, where something's gonna happen, lo and behold, something happens. 
I swear to God. Uh, sometimes it's hard to forget that it's a work of fiction. When you don't have any, like, moral attachments, right? You start... It, it, the, the villain's actions are very consistent with his own values, right? He doesn't have any uh, normal, or at least anything that we consider normal in terms of moral attachments. But the morals he does have are consistent, right? He doesn't go out of his way to change his behavior. It, it's always the same, right? It's just incredibly menacing to the protagonists. But it's... It's interesting. It's interesting. And to me, the most interesting thing would be for uh, Vico's mother to actually turn out to be like that. Because, so far, the very few things that we know uh, make her out to be sympathetic. But that might be skewed from the perspective of Rico, right? And, uh, and Ozen, that, that guardian. And he has a spooky helmet with a pupil laser. <laughs> yes, of course, the laser. That's, that's the most important part of the character, obviously. But... Yeah. Uh, it's in the movie that... Um, the guy refers to... Reg by his species name, right? I think it is. It's not in the in the series. Yeah, I think it's in the, the movie. That he calls Rega Rega. Big He calls Rega an Ovad. Her mother's called the Annihilator or the Shore. <laughs> the Annihilator, Jesus Christ. What was the um, the name given to Rico? I forgot. I forgot. Uh, Rico, white whistle name. She is the only child of the white whistle, Liza. The Annihilator. Secret Camp, The Great Fault, Poison and Soul, Evil, Jesus Christ, Iruburu. So, the Edo Front. Wait, she doesn't have a name?
Okay, so at least in the wiki, there's not like a lot of story left. There's like two arcs after this season. So they might be waiting for more manga to come out. Because they, they sort of hinted to a third season. But I don't think it has been confirmed. Uh, really? White Whistle name? Does she have a White Whistle? She doesn't. She doesn't have a, a White Whistle name. It's like, it's a very compelling protagonist. There's a lot of things... Um, like, the protagonist was born in the abyss, right? For all intents and purposes. Just, just that, in and out of itself already makes her a very important individual. I never understood that. Like, the mother couldn't leave the abyss, right? She could because of the relic that she was born in, but the mother couldn't leave. Why is Rico not as important or even more important than a white whistle? It's like... And if I remember correctly, she was bullied heavily in the first season. That was ridiculous, dude. Like she would pretty much be a case of study, if anything. Dick. Dick thighs. Hmm, maybe? That could happen. But it kind of feels like a waste, doesn't it? story is told is very much in medias res so we are pretty much in the middle of the action and we only learn about the details later that's that's pretty much how the second season is told actually you start right at right at the middle and you get some context from the past you get to see how it turns out and then the way it started makes a lot more sense. It's very interesting. Like you're going to learn more about uh, Reg's past. It's going to be very interesting.
Actually, I think I'll leave this entire part in at least light shadow. Huh? I'm gonna see then what I'm gonna put in heavy shadow. I think it makes more sense. Because the, the thorax. Thorax is um, casting shadow on it. Chainsaw Man, I really think that it can become something special. When I was reading it, um, like right off the gate, it felt like a different type of shonen, right? And a lot of people were weirded out by the way the first part ended. Also, there's a lot of simps for Makima, but I think they are being misguided because she is not that thick in the manga. It's just fan art makes her incredibly thick for no reason. So I think they're going to be very disappointed with what the show delivers in, in that regard. three-hour stream today yet but I'm gonna try at least go to go for a two-hour one just to recover a little bit still oh I'm incredibly sore like if you turn on the flat color it was just color oh not that we turned this mode into color. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, hue. No. Multiply. Darken. Yeah, I don't know what the through means. is just really shitty. He also landed on the exact day I had a Zoom meeting at 9 a.m. in the approximately one hour. <laughs> yeah. 
coincidences. Totally a coincidence. I didn't plan any of that. I didn't uh, have the previous knowledge. And uh, if you um, accuse me of anything, I will sue. No, but no. Work has been very rough. Like, because <sighs> the work contract said it was pretty much like. Um, warehouse uh, organizing and things like that and putting back supplies and things like that it's not it's no longer that like there was a change of plans and now we're dismantling and cleaning by hand every single um, shelf from a supermarket that you know th those shelves haven't been washed in years so even with corrosive agents it's like hard to get out the filth and even then we're not using like any protection for our hands so like yeah at the end of like one or two hours our hands are completely destroyed pretty much and there are people there that um It's not chew their nails, but like they bite into the skin that is on the side of the nails. And you know, having a corrosive agent going going at it in your in your hand is not um, fun. A lot of people are not wearing safety uh, shoes, which is also very dangerous, especially when we carry so such big weights. English, English is hard. <laughs> yeah, like night shift is terrible. It feels like you're living to work and not working to live. If that makes sense. Because you get home, like you spend the entire night awake, you get home, and you're lucky if you get anything done. Because you're going to spend the entire day recovering from the night. Even if you get used to the schedule. Spicy nail flavor. Yes. Yes. as I get some work done, I'm sure that um, I'll be able to catch a rhythm eventually and just go for it. I think my main goal for this year is like uh, gain some following, and, but I still need a plan for that because doing what I've been doing is not going to work. So, gotta see what's uh, trending and work on that. Improve my overall skills and start getting commissions. So 
like this. Go here. Go here and here. Everything. Yeah. Uh, how long will you be working there? Um, so the initial contract said three weeks. Um, this counts as the first week. I was there already for a training week. But yeah, so after tomorrow, two more weeks. I might leave earlier though, because I'm not, I'm not using that uh, work as a way to gain money. I'm using it as a way of gaining experience so that I can legally put on my curriculum that I have working experience so that I can have a better job <laughs> because people don't like to hire other people that don't have any experience, right? Despite some jobs literally not requiring any experience and yet it is what it is. Um, and this one actually requires previous experience and I have none and got in, which is incredibly stupid, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, so three weeks counting with this one. Uh, so it should be... By the 28th of October, it should have been over. But they changed it. And now they're gonna take an extra three weeks. So it should end by November 18th. But I don't even know if I'm gonna last like until the end of next week. So... It is what it is. It's it's like really tough. And it's like my priority is just having the experience in my curriculum and continue streaming. Like if it stops me from streaming, it's um, it's not good. It's not good. It's basically isolating myself from uh, an important part of art making right now which goes completely against my goals. I'm applying, if I'm applying for studies next year, like stopping from studying would be terrible. Speaking of studying, I think that in this piece, I'm gonna try a little bit harder on the background. But yeah. I don't advise anyone to work on the night shift, uh, let alone do it on their first job. Because they are ruthless. And, and in the job that requires experience and they still let you in. Because they're, they're pretty ruthless about it. Like, they're expecting me to be a fast worker when they're teaching me things drop by drop. I make a lot of questions all the time. Maybe even a little bit darker than this. Could really push those shadows. So I think painting like this is pretty much ignoring the black colors because I don't think I can work with uh, blending modes. I think for that I'm gonna need uh, gradient mapping. It's gonna be really interesting. But first I gotta finish like a proper grayscale. The gradient mapping is really cool. And then it's just like adjustments and things like that.
And it's absolutely insane. I know that the night shift is like, I'm not ready for it yet. Because in nine hours I needed three coffees. And uh, I've never drank more than two. And I only drink two coffees per day um, when I really need it. Because if I don't, I avoid caffeine. Because it kind of gives me like um, hand tremors and it makes it harder for me to draw. For instance, when I do traditional watercolor, I need control of the brush. If my hands are shaking, it's going to be noticeable. The paint strokes and the brush strokes, I mean. And um, yeah, I can't, I pretty much can't have caffeine when doing that. Which is interesting. How like different mediums or media, different media uh, influence the way you have to live, actually, in order to have. Uh, good uh, pieces. I'm gonna leave it like that. So that is reflected light. darkest part and then like the terminator right we have the lighter shadow and then we have yeah this might be a little bit too dark but like i'm gonna I might not exaggerate as much like um color then we're gonna have the lighter uh, shadow and then we're gonna have the ambient light and reflect from the ground and things like that I think that's gonna that's gonna work we will I like that style I actually learned about this concept when I was studying um, neon from Valorant Valorant came up with a bunch of artwork, and I and I just thought, you know what, Valorant has cool art, so I'm just, I'm gonna study it for a little bit. And I realized that they sometimes do that, although the, their approach is a little bit more polygonal, which is kind of a a breath of fresh air, if I'm being completely honest. Like um, Riot's splash art skin is incredible, but nowadays it feels a bit. Uh, it feels a bit samey, right? The quality of the splash arts is like something to be expected. So usually they don't have any bold approaches to it. And it becomes a bit boring. 
despite being of incredible quality. But Valorant still feels like a fresh style. So. I don't, I want to know why this is dark. Oh, because it's in multiply. I'm, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Like, Valorant has a different approach to it that I really enjoy. Also, I, I realized something. I was watching the, the documentary that they made of the making of Arcane, right? And how the studio Fortiche uses 2D effects in conjunction with 3D animation and it looks incredible. Uh, Valorant for its uh, episodes and things like that also uses uh, that style because I, I saw uh, an artist on Twitter that I follow and um, he was sharing things that he did for Riot. That was pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. And it's like he shows his work, right? And it seems like nothing, like a bunch of particles. And when he shows in context, you see it's like snow and uh, smoke and things like that. It's really cool. gonna try it here Maybe. just to see what happens first I gotta make a selection though Probably a more efficient way of doing this, but I completely forgot about it. Right, if we do, I don't know if it's filter. Layer. 
bits here correction layer gradient map right this is like rainbow Using the um, okay, so we're gonna cancel. Mm. We're gonna copy the folder and we're gonna flatten this one. Okay. We're gonna apply to this one, a layer and a correction layer. I'm gonna show what the gradient map can do eventually. a tutorial on this really all right CSP re yen Adjustment layer. It is requiring a selection. But I'm confused. Stupid. Uh, new correction light. Gradient map. What is happening? Is it mixing ray curve or something? No. Oh. 
Oh! Okay, it was as simple as clicking twice. Alright, um, uh... You did not see this. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, gradient maps is pretty much this. Like, it's pretty cool. And I can tweak it. Let me see effects. The view is not bad, I think. My eye surgery just reversed. <laughs> oh, How convenient. So I can move this individually, and I'm gonna make it. a little bit more like this color yeah and uh, I'm gonna select this but make it a little bit lighter yeah something like this maybe a little bit warmer but yeah like like this without the gradient and then with the gradient like it's, it's really cool that I'll, I'll be able to, to do this instead of like using modes on the layers so I think that I'll be fine I just gotta paint like consistent values. The values need to be consistent, they don't even need to be right. And I'll be able to use the the correction layer. I'm gonna delete this. Painting on this one. Maps are such a powerful tool. I still use them very regularly, but once I gain more practice with them, they'll definitely like speed up my process. Just painting values, change the colors. I can even change the values if I want to in a consistent manner. Uh, do some manual adjustments and yeah, the entire process becomes streamlined, becomes faster, which means I can spend more time on other stuff. for Mr. Streamer.
this dark. Bravo 6 going bark. My brain looks on a different frequency. The type of frequency where you build uh, non meta comps and then complain that you can't win. That type of frequency. <laughs> Win, of course, they build Rage Blade. Eee. Yeah, no shit, it's the meta. I'm an idiot. But it is fun when I win with uh, non meta comps. And it's not as fun when I win with meta comps. feels too safe, especially like normal games, yeah. although I think Double Up uh, doesn't have normal, it's always ranked, ah whatever, I'm not there to win anything. Shade here, that's okay. The climb never stops. Yeah, legends never die, right? Uh. grants you uh... <laughs> mm. yes I am mad scientist <laughs> you gotta experiment man you gotta experiment you gotta take control of the system <laughs> it's like most people oh uh, uh we're gonna make a dragon mancer nunu because it is a very strong guess what i see in the game wow rage wing can go up to 12 <laughs> i'm gonna go do that you know Bruisers can go up to 8, but why? They make no damage and then titanic strength comes along as an augment. Yes. Yes. Well, here is... Uh... No, here it should be normal. Yeah, here is normal because there is no ambient light here. Yeah. Things that I need to think about when drawing. Yeah, I don't know what to tell. The guardian augment, where uh, every time someone attacks a guardian, they get like a percentage health taken. <laughs> That to me is so funny. Not only are they super tank, but now they also do damage when they're attacked. Oh. Yes, please. It is what it is, you know? 
it is what it is. A dragon that I enjoy a lot in this set is like Terra. Terra feels really cool, both as a concept and like as a unit. It's really strong and I like the damage reduction. And I think it also procs with uh, the ability procs with the Infinity Edge. I actually saw that from Skara's stream. He built like Infinity Edge on uh, Terra. And it did massive damage. It was really fun. say that like overall I think I appreciate it more honestly but you know it, it kind of caters a bit to me because like it's easier to make full guild and things like that like the new dragons where you want to uh yeah I think lagoon is weird also dark flight is also weird is there any other new trait? I mean, there's like the Prodigy, there's the Monolith, but those are Dragon Traits, technically speaking. Um, is there anything new? I don't think so, right? J seems to go through, so... Assassin, boosting roll back. Astral reward, yeah. Astral is astral. I'm not even kidding. Like, if you can't find an Aurelian soul, you're done. You're done for the game. You're probably not even gonna be top four. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You might hold the fort a little bit if you can manage to put like a Hylas to have the Bruiser and Mage traits. Uh, maybe if you have a stacked Lux, uh, you can still do some damage. I mean, technically speaking, you could use some instead of Silas, but then you have like a very weak front line. Yeah, I, st I think I still prefer Silas. Silas in the front. Silas in the front, so you have Mage and Bruiser. Yeah. Because they don't hold, hold up well in the long term. Yeah. They're all pretty much weak, uh, weak um, characters. Unfortunately. And it's a. For me at least, it's annoying because. Aurelian Soul is pretty much in the same category as Aoshin, where you have to put him at 2 star and have the correct items. I mean, just 2 star alone is already good enough. Like, you put them at 2 star and that's pretty much like almost an auto win, right? And that to me is like very shitty the game quality the only way to go against it is if you have like a another dragon uh two starred in like a high cost dragon uh, two star 
And that to me is like very shitty. I get it, they're, you know, the most expensive dragons, so them being two-starred should have an impact in the game, but it's almost an auto-win. And to me, that, that kind of sucks. It's like you're sure you're rewarding the player for managing to two star an expensive dragon an expensive dragon that is hard to find regardless but it, it shouldn't be as you reward a player and therefore you're punishing the entire um the entire the, the rest of the game you know the adversaries you're punishing everyone else because they can't really win. Like all they all they could do is roll their entire gold and pray that they can come up with something. But I do think like for s to some extent, I think the RNG is no longer as bad of a thing as it was in the beginning. I think in the beginning, the RNG was uh, a harder thing to deal with. Uh, I don't remember Lux, but I remember MF. Like, we would build MF uh, AP and... Like, two abilities could absolutely obliterate an entire team. That was really bad. That was really bad. Like, even MF1 would uh, do a lot of damage. The GP, I don't remember. Another thing that annoys me. Uh, another thing that annoys me was, or is, how if you are level nine and you have a bard, eventually your one cost units in the shop will become zero percent. That sucks, man. Like when you have nothing else to do, at least you could like, you know have a small chance of three-starring the one-cost units instead of, you know, blocking completely access to those units. Like, even if it was 1%, because, you know, five cost is 1% at, like, level 7 or something. Yeah, but, you know, it's always um, a small power-up when you have nothing else to do, like, imagine uh, your dragon, your your expensive dragon is two-starred. Um, every other unit is, like, two-star, but it's going to be very complicated to three-star them. You know, if you have a 1% chance of having a one cost, and you have the econ for it and everything, like, at least allow us to actually get them. In the shop i'm not saying that we're gonna actively search for them but if they show up you know, like it'll be cool because i remember one time i was playing lagoon and i had 
zero percent chance of fighting one cost units and i three star the talia because it was showing up in rewards pretty much Zero percent is just like stupid. One percent is good. Is it good stuff? Yeah, yeah. Like that one percent. Yeah. If anything, you want the one percent is only going to stop you from getting like three costs. A level nine, you have such a high probability of having four and five costs. It's like, yeah. Who cares? I've been like multiple times in the situation where my one cost unit is occupying space in my bench and I'm like one short but I need space in my bench so I sell those units because I can't find them anymore right and it's really frustrating <laughs> like technically speaking I didn't lose any investment because one cost units two stars don't lose any gold it's only uh two gold and up where you start losing gold from upgrading units if you want to sell them but still it's a bit annoying might be a little bit of ocd kicking in but I think I'm gonna... Today I'm gonna aim for finishing this second shadow layer and I'll be done with it today so I can recover a little bit and then I'll be back tomorrow and hopefully I can do a three hour stream tomorrow because it is rough. My body, I there haven't been a lot of times where I felt as shitty as this. The shadow layer. The shadow realm. The gulag. <laughs> You're going to Brazil. I'm going to start naming my layers with memes like the gulag is going to be the light shadow and uh, the Brazil is going to be the the dark <laughs> that's with the oh, the infamous Itasio CISPN We cannot make fun of him. He is forklift certified. He is a true Chad.
Is this, is this song from Pokemon? I think it is. Yeah, New Park Town. Yeah. Of course it is. Soul Silver. If I have to if I had to say like a favorite game that I had, it would probably be Soul Silver. Like there are a lot of great contenders because Minecraft. I love modern Minecraft. Jesus Christ. And now that I remembered about it, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can play it a little bit. Or collapse. But I love modern Minecraft. Especially like mod packs with a lot of tech into them and automation. Because I can really feel the progression. It's not like, oh, I ran out of materials. Here I go mining for another hour. It's like, I ran out of materials while automating a mining system or a resource gathering system and you don't have after that effort you don't repeat that task anymore you just go and do new tasks i would really like those types of uh, mod packs don't feel so repetitive or house with you or whole building Okay, it's looking decent. It's looking decent. After I I am done with shadows, uh, ambient occlusion, I'm gonna blend them a little bit. Like you have the blur right. And you start. Actually, I might have to. Why is it not working? Blur. Look, look. Hello? It's not working? Close blur or blur. It's not working. Oh, it's working on the... What? Wait. What is happening? Okay, it, it was working. I just, I just couldn't see the progress I was making. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm stupid. Give me a, give me a discount here. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> it's gonna be my, <laughs> my excuse for everything. Is, uh, give me a sec. I'm tired. Like, I can uh, blend it a little bit. and um, redefine it, like, no shading, right, I'm just, this one's gonna be hard, but like, redefine it a little bit, you know, something like this, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do after, but it's more of a rendering phase, not so much, I don't want to focus too much on tiny details so far, so I'm going to keep it like the big picture. Hard shadows are done, ambient occlusion comes next, which is like almost black. And then uh, a little bit of fixing and uh, light, direct light, reflected light and highlights are going to come. Then. Um, after the values are all set and done, gradient maps come in, and then uh, fixing uh, layers, so adjustment layers. Well, technically speaking, not adjustment layers, but like layers that I put on top of so that I can manually paint anything that doesn't feel as nice. But yeah, that's, that's gonna be the plan, so... I'm gonna finish for today. It has been what two, two hours and ten minutes or so. 
still a bit tired, but we're getting there. Um, yeah, I want to thank everyone that joined today, whether live or on VOD. Uh, hopefully tomorrow at the same time, and hopefully I managed to the entire three hours. It has been a bit of a struggle, but yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.